Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Hi, this is Tim Worth of Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash live in England. And Jacob, one of the believers asked, what makes Christianity unique? We've pointed this out multiple times. Why is the gospel different than religion? Why is the gospel different than religion? And by religion, I would include much of that which falsely misrepresents itself as being Christian. We have to distinguish between scriptural Christianity and Christendom. There are three essential differences between the gospel of Jesus and religion, even when those religions claim to be Christian, such as Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, etc. Let's begin. The first difference. Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Isaiah 1.18. Paul says our faith is reasonable. The gospel of Jesus is not an intellectual faith. It's not an intellectual faith, but it is intellectually credible and defendable. It is not a blind faith. There is empirical evidence for the claims and historicity of Jesus and his resurrection. That is not true of Joseph Smith or Mohammed. Most of what people believe about Buddha are things Buddha himself never actually taught. Come, let us reason together. The claims of Jesus, the contents of the Judeo-Christian scriptures, are intellectually examinable on the basis of everything from history to archaeology, to truth tables, to recorded prophecy that can be documented as having foretold specific events many centuries before they happened. That is not true of other religions, even though they'd like to claim it. First difference, come let us reason together. Our faith is based on reason. It's not an intellectual faith, but it is intellectually credible. Our faith is reasonable. God wants to reason with man, and he wants to begin reasoning with man about man's state which is his fallen state, sin. According to Isaiah 1.18, in Hebrew, Ishayahu Hanavi, Parak Aleph, Pesuka Shmona Esrei. That's the first difference, reason. It's not reasonable to believe that somebody who, at the age of approximately 54, married a six-year-old girl and took her virginity when she was nine, and that he's the great prophet of God, the greatest prophet. This was Muhammad. He was a pedophile. The Hadith of Islam actually teaches Muhammad was a pedophile. It's not reasonable to believe somebody was the greatest man who ever lived and is greater than Jesus. It's not reasonable to believe that. Joseph Smith was a convicted swindler. It's not reasonable to believe Joseph Smith was God's prophet. He was a swindler. Brigham Young had 23 wives. These guys were terrible men. It's not reasonable to believe those things. Buddha, whose name was Gautama, never claimed to be God and never claimed to have a solution to the problem of death of the afterlife. Centuries later, Buddhist mystics invented those things that Buddha himself never taught. Similar things were done with Confucius in, in the Far East. It's not reasonable to believe these things. But the claims of Jesus are intellectually examinable. You can get the books, evidence that the man's a verdict, begin reading it. According to established scientific methodology, according to the methodologies for arriving at a medical diagnosis, and according to the rules of jurisprudence, you can subject the Hebrew scriptures to those same tests, and they will bear witness to the veracity of those texts. That's the first difference. Our faith is reasonable. Second difference. Every 
religion is man trying to reach God by his works. It doesn't matter if it's a Jehovah's Witness knocking on the door with the Mormons knocking on the door, or a Catholic going to the Novena and saying the Rosary. It doesn't matter if it's a Muslim going on the Hajj. It doesn't matter if it's a Hindu going to the Mahakumbha Mila. It doesn't matter. Every religion is man trying to reach God on the basis of their works. The gospel is the diametric opposite. The gospel is not man trying to reach God. The gospel is God trying to reach man. He who knew no sin becomes sin. He who is God becomes a human, a sinless man, to take ours in order to give us his righteousness. It's not about us trying to reach God. It's about God trying to reach us. It's not something we can do to reach God. We cannot reach God. We cannot. I'll explain more about this in a few moments. We're justified by faith, saved by grace. It's the completed work of Jesus in his death on our behalf as our propitiation, as our substitutionary atonement. It's him paying the price for what we did and raising from the dead to give us eternal life. That is our salvation. True Christians do not do good works in order to be saved. That will never work. True Christians do good works because we have been saved. The good works we do are not our own righteousness per se. It is rather the righteousness of Jesus in us and through us. It's not our righteousness. All of our righteousness is again as filthy rags, Isaiah writes. Third difference between the gospel and religion. What makes it unique is this. Religion believes in this myth that man is basically good and the brotherhood of man. The gospel tells us man was created good, intended to be good, but he's basically fallen. There's sin in all of us. In Judaism, we see this battle as the rabbis even describe it. Yetzir hatov and yetzir hara. A propensity towards wanting to do good, but there's a propensity towards wanting to do evil. That is the fallen nature of man. And for the Christian, it is the old nature. People are not basically good. They're basically fallen. They may want to do good, they may want to be good, but because of sin, because of what theologians call the homotosphere, the kingdom of Satan, because of the world, the flesh, and the devil, people cannot be good in any perfect sense. And God only accepts perfection. He says, be holy as I am holy. Well, how can I be as holy as God? Because God became a man and took my sin and gave me his righteousness imputed. That's the only way. Man is not basically good. Man is basically fallen. We should not build the brotherhood of man. We should build the kingdom of God. It is the Antichrist and the spirit of Antichrist that propagates this idea. All religions can unite and we can make a better world. <clears throat> One of the main messengers of Satan in the world today is Rick Warren. That man works for the devil. He has his global peace plan. We don't have to agree with other people's beliefs in order to work with them to bring in global peace. What? First of all, no Christ, no peace. Jesus is our peace. He's the only one who can make us one, it says in Ephesians. And when you translate Ephesians into Hebrew, it's beautiful. He's our peace, we shall be one. He is our reconciliation. The wall of partition is broken down. He's our peace, we shall be one. No Christ, no peace. No Christ, no true unity. We can never be united with each other unless we're united with God but we're separated from him because of sin. Hence, we need a sin bearer who conquered sin and conquered its consequences, death. 
in his own resurrection. Rick Warren is a liar. Not only that, but Moses makes it clear that other gods are demons. Shadim in Hebrew. Paul says other gods are demons. Uh, <clears throat> the monoi in Greek, according to 1 Corinthians. Rick Warren says we have to unite with people who worship Rama and Sitra and Shiva. These are demons. All right, Krishna is a demon. Allah is the Arabian moon god. We have to unite with people who worship demons, teaches Rick Warren, in order to bring in global peace. This is the Antichrist agenda. No Christ, no peace. So we have those three differences. Come let us reason together, says the Lord. It's not a blind faith. It's not, you need something to believe in, buy my product. You need something to explain the unknown, or the great beyond, or to deal with your fear of death. So be a Hindu, be a Buddhist, be a Muslim, be a whatever. No. Come let us reason, says the Lord. Second, man cannot save himself, he must be saved. Third, man is not basically good, even though he was created to be basically good, he's become basically fallen. All religions are man trying to reach God on the basis of some works or some human righteousness, as opposed to the gospel, which is the imputed righteousness of Christ. Let me explain what Isaiah meant when he said, all of our righteous deeds are as a polluted garment. The original Hebrew meaning for the term polluted garment was a bloodied or soiled menstrual cloth. Every menstrual period is a failed conception, is a failed pregnancy, is a failed birth. You see these young couples who will go to infertility clinics going through in, in vitro fertilization and so forth, trying to have a baby. The last thing they want to see is a normal menstrual cycle because it meant a failed birth. There'll be no birth. Our works, our works and our righteousness, there will be no second birth. You cannot have second birth through our own efforts. It'll be Hopeless. The same as a bloodied menstrual cloth means there'll be no biological birth. A work-based righteousness in religion means there will be no second birth. We can't do it. Only the Lord can do it. Again, true Christians do good works because they've been saved not to get saved. Nobody's works will save them. As we've pointed out many times, Satan, probably over the centuries, and until this day, gets more people into hell with religion than he does with all of the immorality put together. All of the substance abuse, all of the marital infidelity, all of the perversion, all of the corruption and dishonesty, he gets more people into hell with religion than he does all of those things put together because religion whitewashes over those things instead of letting them be dealt with at the cross of the Messiah, Jesus. Many people, many people are in hell. In the history of humanity, nobody, not one single person has ever gone to heaven because of religion. Nobody has ever gone to heaven because of religion. And nobody will ever go to heaven because of religion. You cannot go to heaven because of religion, even if it claims to be Christian. You can't go to heaven because of religion. You can only go to heaven because of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, while nobody has ever gone to heaven because of religion, countless souls, countless, have gone to hell because of religion. 
religion can't save you. Religion couldn't save me. Religion has never saved anybody. Only the Messiah of Israel. Only Jesus Christ, who took our sin and gave us his righteousness, who died our death to give us his life, who after conquering sin and death, rose from the dead to abolish death and give us life eternal. Only he can give us salvation. And nothing short of a repentance and personal faith in him is ever going to deliver the goods. Religion, per se, is a waste of time. And Jacob, both of us being fathers as well and having children, uh, I, I've talk about the fallen nature. I have never had to correct my kids as babies or little ones that they share too much. Their, their, their first three words are usually mama, papa, and no. Um, so it, it's instinctively that they want to be selfish. It's instinctively made yeah, it, it made into them. As my friend David Pawson once said, we don't have to teach little children how to behave badly. We have to teach them to behave properly. We don't have to teach them how to lie. We only have to teach them how to tell the truth. We don't have to teach them how to covet. We only have to teach them how to share. Yeah. Point is right. And uh, the best thing we can do is turn all our friends and family and young people towards Scripture where they'll find the real truth. When you turn towards Jesus, you automatically turn towards Scripture. And when you turn towards Scripture in truth, you automatically turn towards Jesus. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you.